All right. Um, I am a distracting behind me. It's just a reflection. Oh, no, I think it's totally fine. Okay. Um, well, I am with my friend Alicia Witt right now. She is an actor, a singer, songwriter, and a pianist. And I've just been loving following her on social media the last couple of weeks. Um, like I was just explaining to her before I started recording, she's been a burst of bright light in uh, what has been kind of a dark couple of weeks. So thank you for joining us tonight. Oh, thank you for having me. I really appreciate what you just said, too. Absolutely. Um, so you've had a crazy last month. I, I know that you um, publicly posted about how you and your dog, Ernest, were displaced uh, by the tornado a couple weeks ago, which I had been to your house for your Christmas party, and it was lovely. So do you want to start by talking about that experience and maybe how that's changed you over the last couple of weeks? I think it's hard to, it's, it's that kind of thing where you, you've experienced it yourself. And so for me, this whole coronavirus thing that everyone in the whole world is dealing with right now, my personal experience of it is that it's coming on the heels of this other extraordinarily surreal experience. And so I think the effect that all of it collectively is having on me is that I just, I, I feel like everything that I knew is, is different. And in a way, this isolation that we're all going through began for me in terms of it feeling, feeling surreal, everything began for me with the tornado. Yeah. It's, and it's hard to even describe what that feels like because the overriding thing that I have felt from the tornado is gratitude because I could see how easily there could have been a lot of loss of life right there on my block. It's just a miracle how every one of my neighbors heeded the siren and felt instinctively that there was something different about that siren than the 60 sirens we get a year here in Nashville. Mm -hmm. So there are people on my block whose houses are completely demolished and destroyed and will need to be rebuilt. And if they hadn't been in the basement, their families could have been dead. Mm -hmm. And then there's my house where there is so much damage, but it doesn't have to be demolished to the ground and started over again. And, and also my dog and I are safe. Speaking of which, hold on one second. Ernest, okay. here, get out of there. <laughs> he, um, Ernest likes to go through trash. <laughs> And in the bathrooms here at this rental house, there's these small trash bins that he likes to shred things and find things that he should not be eating and swallowing. You got to keep them out of there. Yes. Um, well, so, I, um, yeah, so yeah I, I'm sorry. I'm being a little, um, it's, it's really hard to put into words, but I've felt such gratitude and, and I've felt a sense that if that could happen and we could survive it. Um, I think after hearing a, an actual tornado of that magnitude and force ripping through your house while you're in the basement, you, you think in that moment that anything is possible. You don't know if the door to the room you're hiding in is going to come flying open. You're going to be sucked out into it. You just don't know. Um, I can't and then, imagine. And then we survived and we had all these volunteers and friends and people. And so that's more gratitude that I'm feeling because if that had happened this week, instead of four weeks ago, we would all be isolating. So what in the world would we have done? We, I don't know how I could have, I couldn't have even gotten my car out of there without the help of 
all of these people who volunteered their time. Um, my carport and the garage were completely destroyed and um, my car was buried underneath the, rub the rubble. And by some other miracle, my car was okay beneath it. It just has a little, a few dents on it. Mm -hmm. but no broken glass or anything. It was just some weird, amazing miracle. But I would have been trapped in there. I, I don't know what would have happened if, if that had happened on April 1st or 2nd instead of March 3rd. I, I don't know. So I, within this isolation, I'm just feeling this overwhelming sense of gratitude because of what I just experienced. And grateful for a rental house that that my insurance is taken care of and a place to feel safe and peaceful while the the home is being rebuilt and just grateful for my health and the health of my close friends and the people that i know personally who have had the virus have are either experiencing mild symptoms knock on wood or they have recovered at this point. So that's an interesting perspective. I actually haven't, uh, I, now I'm just thinking about it. I haven't talked to anyone yet who's had anyone, you know, who they've been friends with or a family member who's experienced it. So you have? Yeah. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. But I they're know, okay. I, I know a, I have a list of people. Um, yeah, there are, everyone I know so far is okay. Um, I would say the one I'm able to hear the least about on a regular basis is my friend who's younger than I am, who's been in a hospital in New York recovering from a brain injury. Mm -hmm. and, and the last I heard when she was diagnosed about five or six days ago, the symptoms were mild, thank God. Mm -hmm. And I'm just... I, I know she's already in a compromised situation, so I'm I'm praying that she will stay safe and healthy. But yeah, I uh, there's a songwriter I know who lives a few blocks away from me who I hadn't been in touch with for a moment, and turns out she had it very seriously. She was at home and she didn't go to the hospital but she tested positive. Um, well, it sounds like you similar to everyone. I mean, I was listening to this great uh, podcast last night by one of my favorite meditation teachers, Tara Brock, and she was talking about how something this significant that is global and I mean, it's literally sweeping the world makes all of the smaller petty stuff seem insignificant. So I, I'm just like, I'm sensing this like gratitude, you know, exuding from you. I mean, just for being alive. Yeah. I really feel that way. That's and, amazing. And I'm so grateful also that at a time like this, that we are, we're experiencing this global pandemic at a time when we are able to stay connected in the way that you and I are right now. I was it, just, yes. I was just it, saying that to a friend of mine this morning. Exactly. I mean, I, I said, you know, can you imagine if this was like 100 years ago and we couldn't Zoom and do WhatsApp or house party or, you know, I've been following how you are having these online, uh, you know, concerts using the, the app. I had written it down, Stage It. And I thought it's amazing to me that you're able to still um, keep your incredibly engaged fan base equally as engaged, if not more, maybe. It's been doing me a lot of good as well. And I, I guess one of the side effects of this isolation is that it's causing, I think a lot of people to consider what their purpose is here on this, on this planet, at the, in this lifetime. And um, it's, I've felt for a long time that one of my main purposes is making music and finding a way of expressing 
things that we all experience through songs. And I'm finding a way of communicating with my voice and my piano playing um, to reach people and to, and to hopefully connect them together. And it's been even more of this sort of connective experience to be doing these shows from the isolation of this temporary house I'm in. And then on stage it, there's this chat box. So you can see all the people who are watching and all the places that they're watching from mm. communicating with each other, getting to know each other. Some of them already know each other from shows they've attended in real life. Mm -hmm. And then other people have only been in contact on my social media pages. And so they recognize each other there. And then there's people that I, I do know who are friends of mine who are popping in and talking to one another on the chat box. People are making requests and people are sharing what they're drinking and where they're watching <laughs> from and whether it's on their phone, if they're on the move or if they're watching it on the big screen on their television. Mm -hmm. It's that people are watching with their children. It's, it, it's so much more intimate in many ways than playing a live show. And there's a, there's a, a relief of any sort of pressure or nervousness that might come up when you're on a stage and everyone's sitting there looking at you and they have to be quiet and listen. Mm -hmm. um, this way people can be quiet, but they're also connecting while the music is going and mentioning what lines resonate with them. And other people are saying, yes, me too. And it's just, um, I, I suppose this is a silver lining of this incredibly scary time that we're finding ways of connecting with others even more deeply than we did a few weeks ago. I completely agree. I mean, I, I was telling uh, actually um, my mom this morning when we talked that I said it's interesting doing these video interviews because as you know, I usually do my interviews in person and I said, I don't know if it's the time or what's going on, but I said, people are just being very real and, you know, and uh, just, I think really letting their guard down. And I, I think you're ex exactly right. I mean, everyone's sort of um, seeking their purpose right now and maybe has the time to do it. So I would say that I've gotten better interviews as well in the last uh, you know, week or so, which has been really cool. And I was going to say, I mean, music is your second career. So it would be even more interesting to think if you hadn't pursued it, if you had still just been acting and you didn't have this right now. You know, have you ever thought about that? I haven't because it's, I, for a long time now, I haven't been able to imagine my life without music. Mm -hmm. I can remember vividly the time right before I started putting music out. And this, this feeling that I, I knew something was missing and I, I sensed that I wasn't fulfilling my purpose and I wasn't feeling satisfied from acting anymore. I'm thinking around like 2007, 2008, it just, more and more there was this this sense of knocking that was not being answered mm -hmm. and and even before that but once i began writing consistently and then playing shows out and then releasing music i felt like everything came together in a way that it needed to mm -hmm. i thought i felt more satisfied in my acting work and I felt more complete even at times when I had lulls in my, in my career. It wasn't, I wasn't always working as much as I wanted to, but I was much more satisfied than I had been in a long time. And yeah. Uh, yeah. So I hadn't thought about, I hadn't thought for a very long time what it would feel like to not be making music because it's just such a consistent part of my 
my life and my output at this point. Absolutely. I'd be curious to know, and this is something I've been uh, just wondering about with other people, because I think sometimes really um, intense situations like we're all in right now can make art, you know, artists more creative. Um, I think sometimes it can paralyze people because there is so much fear in the air and also depending on, you know, like your news consumption and stuff like that. Have you yeah. been um, writing at all? Have, have you been creating new material or feeling artistic during this time? I did write a song, I mean, before we all, before this all changed, the day, 12 hours before the tornado came through, I was at a writing session with two writers that I hadn't worked with before. And we all were talking about our fears and our uncertainties around the coronavirus. Hmm. And we ended up writing a song called Aim Up To Me, which is utterly eerie now that I know it was written 12 hours before the tornado because it was such a beautiful day. It was gorgeous <laughs> and sunny and birds were singing. And it was just one of those glorious early spring days here. And to think that 12 hours later, this massive tornado would come through. It ain't up to me, indeed. It's all about just being the best, doing the best you can in each moment and um, controlling what you can control and understanding that there's some, some things you just can't. So that, that's a song. And then I ended up writing with the same, the same two writers last week via Skype. And we wrote another really cool song. So that's good. I haven't had as many Skype writing sessions as I imagined I would. I think everybody that I know that I normally write with has been just taking stock and having quieter days. And I've got this song that's been playing in my head since a few hours after the tornado. <laughs> It's going to be written and it's getting written slowly, but it's, it's a song I have to get right. And I'm going to write it by myself as I do many of my songs. So that's one that I keep coming back to. And there's three others that are partially written, but I'm not, I'm not finding it yet at this point to be as creative an output period as I anticipated. And a lot of artists I know are saying the same thing. We're sort of, it's stewing and it's in there and it's a time of meditating and yoga and exercise and journaling. I'm doing lots of journaling. I'm writing down my dreams, which have been just crazy. And I've reconnected with some people that have not been as much in my life the last few years and that's been unexpected and a gift and also bringing up lots of feelings and so I think the songs are going to be coming very soon for me. Also there is a single that has been sort of lurking in the wings for a long time that I I had, I guess I'd been saving it for the right moment, whatever that right moment might be. There's a lot of pressure that an artist can feel from the quote unquote industry of when the right time is to release a song and doing a whole campaign before it and teasers and videos. And I'm, I, I just realized this is the time to release it. So mm. I literally don't know what day it's coming out because I just had this feeling that I wanted it to come out as soon as possible. And when you put it up on TuneCore in that way, it could come out any day. <laughs> um, it'll be on all the platforms as a single and it's called More. And I have always felt that it's a sort of prayer song and it just feels very resonant for right now. So it'll be out soon. 
It sounds like your intuition is like really on fire right now. I mean, you were talking about the dreams being really intense. Mine have been very intense too. I don't know why I was thinking about that this morning. And uh, I, I love that you're saying that you just kind of tapped into realizing it was the right time to release this song. When maybe before, if there was the noise of the world and you were going, 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 you wouldn't have had that moment to realize that or to reflect. Yes. And, and it's not, I think the purpose of this song is not to do a whole release or publicity campaign around it. The purpose of this song is just to put it out there. And um, I, I co-wrote this one with Kat Gravit and Skip Black. And I think between the three of us, we harnessed something that needs to be out in the world at this time. And, and that's the purpose of the song is just to reach people. And it, if it's not as big of a release or as splashy of a release, that's absolutely perfect. And just as it's meant to be, I just want people to hear it. One thing I was going to say, I love that you use the word uh, splashy because I was thinking <laughs> uh, one thing I've always been attracted to about you and how you present yourself is you're very real. I mean, I feel like you present yourself um, in a way where it's you. And, and I think that people gravitate towards that. Um, so I was curious, and maybe I'm not going to phrase this perfectly, but I think you'll get what I mean. Um, when you became you know, a musical artist, how did you know how you wanted to present yourself? Uh, you know, because you're so good at engaging with your audience and that obviously you know, you do um, stuff like no makeup or shows in your home or, I mean, it's all very real. So was that a conscious choice? I think I've grown into that. In the beginning, when I was putting out music, I don't think I was, I mean, I was just a different person then. And my style was different and I don't know, but it's, I guess what's remained the same is it's been, it has always been me. Yes. Um, and I've always felt like because I make a living at playing characters, music is a way for me to be myself. So whether I, whether the version of myself has been someone who did wear a lot of makeup or dressed a certain way or whatever. It was very authentic to who I was at that moment. I never thought, oh, I'm gonna present myself in a way that I think is gonna be, I've never done anything that seemed commercially uh, viable or it's never really been a concern of mine because I have the luxury of having this other career where I can, I can worry about campaigns and publicity and all of that stuff. And it's been also a luxury to be able to combine the two of them, have songs used in movies or television episodes mm -hmm. and to be able to publicize my music when I'm doing campaigns for studio movies or network stuff where there's, there's already going to be an incredibly wide audience for the press that I've done for those. So music has just felt in many ways like a respite and a place where I can tell my stories. And once I learned to get over the butterflies and the self-imposed pressure of just wanting to be good enough when I played a show, it's, it's been a real joy. It's just something I look forward to and it, it feeds me as much as I would hope it helps other people to feel connected and put Love towards it. things that they've experienced too. Absolutely. Well, I just have one last question for you. Um, I saw that you've been posting a lot of stuff about cooking. I think it's always yes. great to have, uh, you know, several creative outlets. And also we all need a little bit of comfort food right now. Um, so uh, do you want to talk a little bit about, I, I mean, I was thinking even in terms of the fact that you're living in um, a rental home right now. I mean, I would assume cooking's like very grounding for you at the moment. 
It is. It is. I've been cooking for the last two weeks. I have cooked every meal and yes, that's been very grounding. It's also very time consuming (laughs) (laughs) because then of course you cook, then you have to do all the cleaning up and you, you know, put all the stuff away. And I'm finding all of that very therapeutic, just the basic rituals of cutting and slicing and cooking and cleaning and, um, and then coming up, it's been a combination for me of coming up with new things, but also there are some very basic comfort food items that I tend to eat all the time. One thing I especially love is homemade pesto. Mm, and yes. I've been really admiring Trader Joe's during this pandemic so far. They've kept their stores really clean and they've been limiting the people who are inside of it. And they keep the first hour of the day reserved for people who are over 60. Mm-hmm. And they, it feels like if you have to, if you have to go out or you are in a low risk category and you feel you can take that chance and go out and shop for yourself or for others who are higher risk. Um, I'd say Trader Joe's has been pretty great and they have a wonderful produce selection. And I think I, I, I wish I could help some of my friends who are leaning on canned foods and frozen foods at this time, because I just, I think fresh produce is so important. Um, but yeah, I've been making, I've been keeping a standby stock of fresh homemade pesto in the fridge and one very easy, delicious thing to make is steamed broccoli with beans and yeah, or you can use kale or spinach instead of, well, spinach, not so much in this recipe, but broccoli or kale or both are really good with beans and and then you just toss that with your homemade pesto and maybe add a little salt and pepper or some other spices to it like dill or tarragon Mm -hmm. and um and it's it's not necessarily the most photogenic recipe it looks like a big messy plate but it's so good you can use a little vegan cheese in it and gets even creamier and it's very very comforting and very good for you too well i've been loving your um your cooking uh photos and uh instagram stories and i was thinking you'll probably be the only one who doesn't gain the covid 15 <laughs> so they're saying everyone is going to gain that from doing too much uber eats uh pizza so yeah we're putting healthy vegan recipes out there we could all use those right now well thank you i'll keep on doing it <laughs> There's actually some people at the Stage It show I did last Saturday who asked me to post some more recipes because I'd been doing that for a while anyway, periodically on my Instagram stories. And a few people were like, please post some more recipes. We need recipes. Well, I'm going to stop recording. We can talk about the cookbook we can write together. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) 